Now, President Uhuru Mwegai Kenyatta, together with ODM leader, Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga, will launch the signature collection for the Building Bridges Initiative uh, tomorrow at the KICC in Nairobi. Now, this exercise is expected to end on 2nd December 2020. According to the former Dagoroji South Member of Parliament, Dennis Waweru, who is also part of the Joint Chairman leading the BBI National Secretariat, he said, and I quote, we call upon those who want to see the end of corruption, ethnic antagonism, marginalization of sections of society, empowerment of youth, women and uh, people living with disabilities to board the BBI train. But now the question is, the BBI, will it be accepted, rejected or refined? Tonight, we discuss this and much more. Joining me in the discussion, I'm joined by Effie Sheila. She is a corporate lawyer awaiting admission to the bar as an advocate. She is currently undertaking her master's in public international law at the University of Nairobi and with an equal bias in sports and medical law. She works at Direct Line Assurance. Effie Karibusana. Now, I would like to give you two minutes to address the nation. Give us your stand. Now, what is your stand on how the BBI train enforces national values in its and its acceptance by Kenyans? Your two minutes starts now. Uh, well, uh, BBI is a, is a constitutional process that, in as much as we say we cannot uh, adopt it now, we can't wish it away either way. So uh, the BBI, as it is right now, is a process... Uh, I can't say it's a train that's left the station, but I think it's a process that is necessary, but it needs a bit of amendments. Mm. Whether or not it will pass is another issue altogether. But my views are that if we are advocating that BBI is about inclusivity, and from the onset we are leaving away voices of people that are saying we need to be heard, how much inclusivity is this document going to bring? It's a good document. It's better than what we have if we adopt it. But is it the best that we can get? Mm -hmm. Let's give it time. Let's amend it. Let's make it the best that we can get. All right. Thank you very much, Ify. You may have your seat. Introducing next, my next panelist joining me tonight. I'm joined by uh, Masharia Waidaka. He is a political analyst, a lawyer, an environmental acti activist. He has been involved in community development projects and also involved in educating the public on constitutional matters to help in understanding better the BBI. Waidaka, karibu sana. I'm giving you two minutes to address the nation. Give us what is your stand in regard to the BBI train and how it enforces national values and its acceptance by Kenyans. Your two minutes starts now. Um, first of all is to say thank you for having this platform and I'll start by stating one thing. Um, the thing is that um, we have a country that is going to be living um, for the next 100, 200, 1000 years and this country is not being folded. Tomorrow uh, it wasn't folded yesterday and we are going to be alive in the next so many years. And um, one of the good things about this country is that it is a democracy. And the BBI process is one of the processes that, the processes that make sure that our democracy continues to grow. I have always advocated for people having conversations on issues that are okay, of key importance. One of the things that we have to understand is that uh, the issues that are being discussed in BBI are very good, they are proper. Uh, the mind behind BBI is actually very good, the intentions are proper. But now if we look at the contents of that document, we will find that there are so many issues that have to be addressed. Now there is something that we cannot do, we cannot put uh, a timeline to public participation on such a very important issue. Um, I believe that tomorrow's um, launching of the collection of signatures is premature, that we should be allowed. As much as we are saying that it's a democracy and everybody has a choice, everybody should also be allowed uh, to bring uh, in their views. Because anyway, this is a process that is going to affect everyone. We have to understand that um, all these people are powerful and they can influence a lot in this country. But they should not be allowed to use the influence that they have um, to put Kenyans uh, into a process that they have not fully accepted. Mm -hmm. So that is my stand today. All right. Thank you very much, Wazaka. You may have your seat. Thank that you. is their stand. Remember, it is the 24th of November, 2020. The time, now 10 minutes past 8 a.m. We are broadcasting live from the Broadcasting House here in Nairobi, Kenya. This is the stand. My name is Ram Aguko, and the stand starts now.
Remember to engage with us as we continue with this conversation tonight. The hashtag is the Stan KE. Tag me at Ramaguko and at Y254 channel. That is our social media handles on Twitter. Use the hashtag, the Stan KE. The BBI, do we accept it? Do we reject it? Or do we refine it? Give us your stand as you continue with this conversation. We'll be sampling your tweets as you, uh, towards the tail end of the uh, conversation tonight. Uh, lady and gentlemen, Karibun Kar Kar Sana. I know it's the first time that I'm having you guys. Karibu one to five four. Asante uh, Let's start with uh, Honorable William Samoy Ruto. There is a tweet that I would like my director to, to, to pull up, a uh, tweet sent by Honorable Ruto last week, and uh, this is what he said. That the wave of COVID-19 is clearly ra ra ravaging our nation with alarming increases in infections and deaths. Uh, the pandemic is killing people, including health workers, while destroying livelihoods. We should stop everything and mobilize every human, material, and financial resources to fight. That is uh, Honorable William Ruto. That's what he said. Now, um, this is what has been the question by so many Kenyans, raised by many Kenyans, is that should COVID-19 be our only focus at the moment, or should uh, we s should we stop this BBI politics? What do you think? Let me start with you, um, Sheila. Well, uh, this is a very interesting tweet coming mm -hmm. from the Deputy President, who we have seen has held rallies as late as last month before the whole uh, political uh, tone was set was set uh, aside by the President. Yeah. So. Coming now and saying that we should focus on fighting COVID is a good idea, but is it the only idea? Because we say, uh, Tanzania, who are our neighbors, uh, underwent an election uh, just the other week. And the US also underwent an election. It's a global pandemic, COVID-19. Do we stop everything else and fight it? Now that we stopped the rallies and uh, are concentrating on COVID-19, we have mm. doctors who are dying. What is the government doing now that we have stopped campaigning? And uh, th th this BBI issue, should, should we put it a, a, as a pause? Last week, we, it was called off last week. And then this week, it was called back, uh, called back again. And that's politics. They, uh -huh. they call it off, the ground uh, goes quiet, mm -hmm. then we come back again and we're campaigning. Have we set aside structures enough to ensure that while we are campaigning against uh, BBI or for BBI, mm -hmm. that we are keeping the measurements that are required of us to enable COVID-19 not to spread in the society? Because one thing is for sure, COVID-19 is here with us to stay. And Kenya as a country are doing close to nothing on fighting it, except mm -hmm. uh, curfews that, are, that run from probably 10 to to oh. fall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What else is the government doing to fight COVID-19? Sheriff, do we stop BBI, focus on uh, COVID? Um, I think um, we, when we ask that question, we are, we are, we are going to be mixing issues. Mm -hmm. And that is the whole thing that made this whole BBI process become so political. Um, when we started the conversation about BBI, let us uh, have a history lesson right now. Um, when we, uh, let us start from 1992, when we had the first um, amendment of the constitution leading to a multi-party democracy. Mm. Um, that was something that was really necessary. And um, people went to the streets and they fought so that we could have that, uh, we, we could have that issue um, sorted out. Then we came to 2005 where we had started realizing that there are so many issues that this country um, constitutional-wise and uh, politically, and that is why we had the culmination of the 2005 referendum that was uh, the no side one. When we came to the 2010 constitution, the one that we have right now, it had been, after so many conversations had been had, uh, so many talks, people uh, gave their views for quite a long time. And um, that is when we came up with the 2010 constitution, one of the best constitutions that we have in this world. Now. We started this conversation about BBI three years ago, two, three years ago, after the handshake. Yeah. Now we have just had this conversation for just two years, right? Mm. And um, you're saying just two years. Just two years. <laughs> is it a, a short period of time? It is a very short period of time. <laughs> and when we start bringing the issue of COVID-19 uh -huh. and mixi mixing it up with a conversation about a constitutional change, mm. then we'll be mixing up issues. Now, um, COVID is a totally different issue. BBI is a totally different issue. Now. Um, we should be talking, um, instead of making noise and uh, the deputy president tweeting, that, that was a very good tweet because he now showed us um, 
how the government is unprepared about this whole COVID issue. When you bring up this COVID issue and mix up with BBI, that will give this sort of, uh, uh, we are hurrying. Uh, there is a hurry that is right here. Uh, we need to finish up with this and uh, fight this. One thing. You're saying yeah. that Deputy President is showing us how the government is not prepared up to deal with COVID. Yeah. He is in government. He cannot shoot his own foot. <laughs> Do we have a united government right now? That is a question that I will bring back to you. Now, when the Deputy President and everybody else brings up the issue of COVID-19, at this time when you're talking about BBI, it will be making it look like we are, we are hurrying to, to, to run somewhere. It will make this BBI look like something that has to be done so quickly uh, so that we finish up with either BBI or COVID-19 and it will not allow time for proper conversation. In other words, you're saying BBI should continue COVID, um, simultaneously with COVID issues? Fighting COVID is something that um, can be done. Countries are doing it. Um, we have seen what Spain, uh, France, and all these other countries are trying to do so that mm -hmm. they, can control, uh, they can control the issue. But that doesn't mean that they are not continuing with their political Sh conversation. Sh Sheila, you, uh, are you saying BBI should continue or stop regardless of COVID? BBI should continue regardless of COVID. Okay, so we, Because we like constitution is mm -hmm. a very important debate. We cannot say that we set aside constitution and now focus on fighting a pandemic. A whole country focusing on fighting pandemic and setting aside every issue just to fight a pandemic mm. shows how inadequate that country is. BBI is equally important. We do not underestimate uh, COVID and what it can do. But we are saying that while the government needs to fight COVID and it really needs to fight COVID, mm. we really need to have a discussion on BBI and constitution as a whole. Now the National Mu Muslim Leaders Forum Chairperson Abdullahi Abdi he said this, and I quote, we are neither in the mental nor the financial state to amend the constitution. Please postpone the process. Let us, let us address the COVID-19 issue first. In fact, the National Museum uh, uh, Leaders Forum also said this tweet, in uh, contrary to, um, uh, to, to what we are discussing here, that uh, as Muslims, we, also, we are also saddened by the high rate death of our doctors for lack of PPEs, yet we want to spend over $10 billion on a document that is of no much value to our people and nation let's first handle this epidemic the right way bbi can wait hashtag muslims reject bbi your thoughts my thoughts on this it should be very clear mm -hmm. um I started by saying that um, the collection of signatures, the launching of the collection of signatures tomorrow is totally premature. Mm. Yeah? Because we have made, where are we hurrying to? Yeah? The conversation we are talking about is a conversation about reviewing the document and looking at the, the problems that people have with that document because it has a lot of issues. Um, it, has, it is a very good document, but it has issues that, has to be, that have to be looked into. Now, um, let us stop the collection of the signatures, mm -hmm. but... Let us continue with the conversation about BBI. Let people's views be heard mm -hmm. as we continue to deal with the pandemic. Mm. I'm not saying that anything should stop. The only thing that we should stop is a collection of signatures. But are, are we in the, um, from the words of Honorable, uh, of, uh, or rather the chairperson, Abdullahi Abdi, yeah. he said we're not in the mental or the financial state to amend a constitution. Um, if, you, if you will not, uh, the Muslim society mm. started by saying that one, they do not support uh, IBC being appointed by political parties. That was, mm -hmm. the, that was the first plan. So listen to us. So when, when they want to be listened to, BBI is a conversation that should be had. When they do not want to be listened to, mm -hmm. let's fight COVID. Let's stop BBI, let's fight COVID. We're talking about not passing, not going to a referendum right now. We're talking about having conversations about BBI, talking about the merit and demerits of the document itself. We're not talking about going to vote right now or passing or si uh, taking of the signatures in the 47 counties. We're talking about having that conversation about BBI. Let's take a look at this. This is what they had to say during a, a press briefing. BBI, itaondoa kabisa ile tabia. Yeah, the winner takes it all. Kwamba chama cha kisiasa kikipigiwa kura na kushinda kinaunda serikali peke yake. The people who may have some reservations, but that is as it is. You can never be absolute at all. When you saw when they talked of Brexit, there were those who supported, there were those who opposed. 
Reverend are, are held all over the world. And they are always those who are supporting, <coughs> those who are opposing. That is what democracy is all about. Uh, as the people of Mount Kenya, we do recognize our past marginalization. We do recognize the gains coming from the BBI initiative. And we will stand with the process. <laughs> Uh, that, that is Honda Boraila Odinga say, talking about democracy. Uh, that uh, in the end, yes, it needs to be something that we, we, we should consider. And let me quote what he said, that life must continue despite the pandemic. The U.S. has just conducted their elections. Tanzania just next door conducted theirs. And Uganda is now at the height of elections, con election campaigns despite the, the, the pandemic. Now, Kenya is no different from all those countries. Life must go on. That's what our Honorable Rela is saying. Effie. Well, uh, he's uh, right and wrong mm. uh, in both senses. He's right because uh, life must go on. And this is a conversation that if we do not have now, we will have to have it. So we'd rather just have it now. We're in the middle of a pandemic that we do not know when it will end. The, vac the vaccines are just coming out and uh, we, those projections that we may get the vaccines end of next year. Mm. That's end of 2021. So do we want to postpone uh, a con constitutional uh, document until 2022? That's when we begin talks around it. Mm -hmm. But that does not also mean that the government is taking COVID with all the seriousness it deserves. Because we've seen doctors dying left, right and center. So if we do not take both issues with the, with the weight that they deserve, then who will be there to vote for this document when it comes? Because we've seen, we've seen doctors dying, and these are doctors that are distinguished, renowned. The head of renal just died the other day. We've seen a lot of doctors dying. Mm -hmm. So if doctors are able to die, then what about the common man who will just go outside there and support BBI without taking all the measures? This, both of these issues are issues that we need to look at them with the weight they deserve. Mm. At the end of the day, we may end up with a document with no one to really vote for it. In as much as the document is important and we need to talk about it, there's no stopping talking about BBI. But are we taking COVID with all the seriousness it deserves? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Will okay. Raila and Uhuru be there to vote for the document with the current measures that we are taking on COVID? He, he, he's saying that life must go on. Do you agree with that, Sherry? Um, Raila was using bad examples um, uh, bad to, to, to apply <laughs> to, to apply what, to what this country. To to bad <laughs> they are bad examples because yeah. um, he's talking about elections uh -huh. uh, that have been scheduled um, through constitutions. He's talking about Tanzania. They were scheduled to have those elections this year. Mm -hmm. US was uh, scheduled to have the elections this year to elect a president. Mm. Um, in Tanzania, the same. Right now, Uganda is conducting its um, elections and the uh, it's conducting the its uh, campaigns and, and all that. We mm. know the Bobby Wine issues and everything. Mm. But now, um, what what are the elections for in Kenya? What are we what are we electing? Yeah, how can we take a document uh, to to an election? A document that first most people decide, uh, most people agree that it has issues. I think he's he, he's talking about an election and he's saying that in comparison, Kenya can also have a referendum. A referendum. For what? What document? Uh, you know, in Tanzania they were electing a president. Now here you are bringing us an election about uh, to elect about a document, a mm -hmm. referendum mm -hmm. that uh, about a document that not everybody is uh, agreeing on. Yeah. Let mm -hmm. us first sit down, look at this document critically, open the conversations again. Let us open this document again, correct the errors that are there. There are so many, actually, um, so many lawyers will agree that there are so many drafting issues that are in that document. Um, uh, there are so many ambiguities in that document. An example is that uh, we, we are being told that um, IBC is going to be elected by a cabal of uh, institutions. That is, we'll have political parties and we'll have some religious bodies. But uh, which religious bodies? Yeah, it is not specific on what uh, which religious bodies are going to be involved. What mm -hmm. political parties? What is the place of the small parties like that? The alliance I, 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 in 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 the in getting us an IEBC. Yeah, mm -hmm. we go about uh, creating a youth commission. Uh, what is the function of that uh, youth commission? 
will will it be what are the functions of that youth commission um, what are the uh, purposes of having that youth commission can we have something else you're talking about having a prime minister who can be fired by the president what processes and procedures will the president use so, so that he can take away the prime minister? We are talking about legislating or bringing a legislating an official position. Do we really need to legislate uh, an official position? So you, you, you don't support the BBI? I support the spirit of the BBI. But now the problem is mm. uh, we are hurrying it up. We are hurrying it up. We need changes in this country. You've given, that is you've, true. You've given different examples, yeah. and um, I would like to just touch on just a few. Yeah. And one relating to the very station that we are, mm -hmm. the youth. Yeah. Why two five four? The youth yes. of Kenyan. Yes. We have a youth commission that has been proposed by the BBI. You feel that is not going to be tangible enough to promote the youth agenda? It will not be tangible enough to promote the youth agenda. Um, until that point, when you make sure that the youth are in proper policy positions, mm -hmm. then uh, there's no way that you're going to help them. A youth commission will just be taking recommendations to the ministry, and those recommendations don't have to be followed. So we really need to, we really need <laughs> to sit down. If we're talking about this youth commission, let us uh, be very specific about what uh, that youth commission Sh will be doing. What Sh is the responsibilities uh, of that youth commission? Sh Sh Sheila. See, uh, Article 90 of the Constitution, mm. uh, states a uh, number of commissions that are created by the constitution and these are uh, commissions that draw their power from the constitution which is the the, the document that binds the country mm. so we have we want to sneak in uh, the youth uh, commission currently we have national youth council whose mandate overlaps with the current uh, the proposed youth commission yes so we have a national youth council that is doing uh, virtually nothing but their vision is to ensure that the youth participate at our stakeholders in socio-economical and political roles in the country. And but, then they have slipped on it, that. So, so um, just to cut it short, um, you're, you're comparing this to the, the, the council and the commission. Um, is it expected that the commission will take over, thereby making the council null and void, meaning that the council will no longer exist, the commission will take over? No, the, the proposal has not uh, nullified the National Youth Commission. Mm -hmm. But we're saying that the roles that, they pro that are proposed overlie the roles that are currently in the National Youth Commission, mm -hmm. which is not working. It is a dead commission anyway. It is there to probably uh, take funds of the youth and, and probably just mismanage them. Earlier you, uh, earlier you had mentioned that the BBI is a good document. It is a good document. So you support the BBI? I support the BBI. Mm -hmm. I, however, think that it is not yet time for a collection of signatures and a referendum. They ha there are finer details in the document, like uh, devolution and increasing of funds to the counties from 50 to 35%. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also talking about Huduma number at the moment. So all our details are going to be in one document. There's a proposal for to amend Article 31 of the Constitution that talks about the right to privacy. Because if all your details are in one document, that means if I get that one document, I can transact on anything concerning a person. So we have to also tighten our laws on privacy. There's that which is talked about in the Constitution. And then the, it also talks about uh, public asset and disposal. We've seen uh, Cambry purchase equipment for millions of shillings. They bloat the figures as high as the heavens. Mm. And then we, we have a, a commission that was appointed just the other week, public asset and disposal. They're supposed to curb how far can public entities uh, acquire as public assets. So there are very finer details in that document. But then there are things to be talked about, like the Judiciary Ombudsman, mm -hmm. who is supposed to come and whip the judges in case they do not act rightly, who is appointed by the executive. How then do we get the freedom to act when you're appointed by the executive to join a judiciary, which is another arm of government? How are you going to act against that arm of government? It infringes on um, freedom. Freedom, there yes. There's no independence, actually. That, but the, then, the word is independence. But then again, mm. remember this JSC, which does the same role as the Judiciary Ombudsman. This National Youth Council, which does the same role as the Youth Commission. What are we trying to do? Are we duplicating roles here? Does that mean that the current bodies cannot act? Can we not strengthen them? Do we have to bring in duplicate roles and pay more people? What is the document intending to achieve in you? There are finer details which we cannot wish away, but there are details that leave a lot of questions to be asked. And if you are to look at these questions that have been raised by the uh, BBI, one of them also is the winner takes it all. 
has has it be, uh, be, been answered according to you sheriff the winner takes it all that is another issue mm. yeah um we are talking about that um, we are going to have first um, historically the only time we had a very good parliament a very independent and uh, proactive parliament mm. was the 207 um 2013 parliament the one um, you remember how proactive it was mm -hmm. um uh, between 2013 and uh, mm. this year, mm. we have been having a parliament that is whipped by the executive, at right, left, and center. Yeah. Uh, now you are trying to talk In about. Opinion, you believe that the parliament has been whipped by the executive? It is always whipped <laughs> when the when the executive <laughs> when the executive wants to do something. Most of the times, they, they just uh, make their declarations, and uh, everybody uh, follows what the president wants. Even when we have some <laughs> issues that need to uh, need minds that are quite independent. Ah. Um, now uh, we are talking about the winner takes it all. Remember, we cannot wish this away. We are a country that, has, that is facing issues of tribalism. Most of the times, um, you'll try to bring politics on a basis of ideology. But at the end of the day, what happens and what has historically happened in this country is that we have voted along tribal lines. Now, tell me, you have a prime minister who can be appointed by the president and fired by the president at any time. We have a jubilee party which took most of the positions in parliament. So, the whole executive will be made of uh, people from the same parties, um, people from the same tribes. You just whip away, you just whip um, five, uh, five of the major tribes, uh, Kikuyu, Kalenjin, and then you have a, an, an executive. There is no assurance that having a prime minister position will ensure that uh, the face of Kenya is properly seen. Yeah? Um, the constitution currently says that um, the face of Kenya has to be seen um, in cabinet. Is that the case in point right now? If you look at that cabinet as it is right now, it, it, it's not what the BBI is, is bringing up. But let us positions. be very, let us be very uh, clear. You know, let us not just create positions without uh, clarity. Let us say something like this: mm. um, at least the deputy uh, prime minister has to come from the smallest uh, of the tribes, yeah, or the minority parties, or something like that, because. We will still be, poli we are political beings, we will still behave as we behave. So let us put caps to make sure that we do not continue behaving as we do. Because just having a prime minister position and two deputy prime ministers or a leader of opposition and a leader of majority does not assure Kenyans that the face of Kenya will be seen in that executive. You, you, you're right to reply. Uh, this, this whole conversation stems from the fact that uh, we have an electoral, electoral council that mm divides Kenyans more than it unites Kenyans. And we've seen our previous elections where Kenyans have accepted elections without the winner takes it all or whatever it is. The 2002 general election was a, a good example of a country that was united after the elections. This okay. is because the outcome of the election would actually determine how the country moves forward. There, there, there are some few comments that we would like to sample as we continue. Remember the hashtag is uh, the stand KE. I'm seeing uh, these are tweets, uh, no, these are comments on Facebook, who's saying, Kane is saying, no, 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 Mwanaichi hakuna maali ameangaliwa, devolved government and corruption and result and Mkenya kumia. Aha, Muturia Wamati saying, we are refining the BBI. Sheriff Newton, your name's okay? <laughs> so if I accept my life will be the same, if I reject, it will be the same. Sita enda kupiga kura. Waweru wa keyboard. Nasema reject it. Interesting. Ombati Vincent. Youth must be genuine. Let's not be brainwashed. He, uh -huh. We have uh, Jaff, Jaffet Ratanya Peterson. He's saying from, he's watching from Kinyanka, Igembe South. I reject BBI. Reasons, it's not helping common Mwanainchi in any way. It's just creating seats for certain people. That's what you, you, you had mentioned somewhere there, Sheila. Uh, accept, uh, this is Trevor, Mac, Mac George Noe is saying accept because what we want is peace, a hundred percent. That's what we want. Those are some of your, your, your comments. Remember, as I said, the hashtag is the stand KE at Ram Aguko at Y254 channel. We'll be back. Let's take a short break. After this, we'll be discussing now that BBI is being taken to the counties, what next? Let's take this break. We'll be back in a bit. Keep it Y254. This is the stand.